Hi, my name is Tom Gamble. I am the product manager for the Nginx Instance Manager product. And today I want to show you this product and some of the features. We'll walk through how the install works, how it runs as a service, and how it is native to Linux. We'll also see how we can scan existing Nginx instances in our environment. We'll see how we can manage those. And I'll also show you the API underneath and how we can obtain metrics from those instances. Let's go ahead and get started. On the screen is just a Linux instance and I already have Instance Manager installed, but to install it, I would just run <clears throat> app get or yum. And this would be the command to install. So the install would be quick, it'd pull from a repo. And after it installs, which would take uh, about 10 seconds, uh, we would have it installed and we would simply need to start the service. And we use systemd in this case. And you can see the service is running. Um, so it is controlled with systemd. It is responsive to, to uh, any systemd commands. And let's go ahead and take a look at um, the main page here. So on the main page, we have four instances that are already connected and managed. And I'm going to go and hit on the scan button. For scan, uh, this was going to scan our environment uh, using stealth port mapping. And it uses the same technology Nmap has under the covers. So for this, I'm going to put in my subnet, which is 10.1.1, and my ports, and I'm going to hit start new scan. And we should see some instances start to come back. And we do have a list. So you might notice I have an old uh, Nginx instance running here that's running version 1.7. And we can see already that has 13 CVEs. So while this is not meant to be a comprehensive security check, it is meant to at least give a highlight of possible CVE issues in your environment. Uh, you can run this as much as you want. Um, and for those instances that are managed, you'll see a link uh, linking them back to the main screen. And a plus icon uh, will give you instructions on how to install the agent on those instances that don't run. Now for the agent, the agent is uh, five megabytes in size. It operates as a service and runs uh, in a single binary on the, wherever you're running the Nginx instance. It is compatible with not only plus, but open source and also custom compiled open source uh, Nginx instances. Uh, we do have a list of supported instances. However, the expectation is that it would be widely compatible on what you might have running. Let's go ahead and take a look at that inventory. Now I have four instances here. They're named um, pretty descriptively. So we can see two are open source and two are plus, and then two are Ubuntu and two are CentOS. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click into the open source CentOS. Now, if I click here, we're gonna see on the side just some information highlighting the IP, the version we have. Um, and if I click on the edit icon here, I'm gonna be exposed to an editor. And so we're using the Monaco editor, which is uh, very similar to Visual Studio Code if you're, if you're used to that. And we can scroll uh, up and down. There's a highlight, it's hard to see on the right, there's a bird's eye view that we can um, also scroll with for large files. And we do have a drop down selector for all of our includes. So any comp file that's included will show up here. I'm going to switch over to a default comp here um, that I'm using. And I'm going to go actually back to the main one and try to do something bad. Um, so I'm going to go and add a server uh, context in the wrong area. And you'll notice um, there's a red squiggly line. And if I hover over, it says server's not allowed in the context. So what we have working is our analyzer functionality. We've uh, used rules that we've gathered from, um, from our uh, customer service, and we've added them here to help identify issues that NGINXT might not catch. And so this will catch when you move your uh, mouse off the line or if you hit analyze at the top right. And uh, there are a variety of rules and th these will be expanded upon um, as we have future versions come out. Well, let me get rid of this because I don't want the error in there. And I'm gonna switch over to this default.conf. And at the bottom, I have an index.html. This is the website 
uh, that has that index HTML and it's just a standard CentOS website. So what I wanna do is demonstrate how I can change the file. And I do have a sample HTML already there that I'm gonna to switch to and publish. So I'm gonna comment out index, uncomment sample, and I'm gonna hit save. And save just saves it in uh, the instance manager uh, database for right now. It's, it's the equivalent of saving on disk on the instance, but we haven't published it yet. So if we go to, if we go to the website and refresh, it's still the same website. I'm gonna hit now hit publish, and then I'm gonna switch over and hit refresh to show hopefully how fast we do this. Publish, refresh. And you can see it's already updated. So generally we're looking at updates uh, within a second as we push, as we push these out. Um, the agent is also polling every second, um, which is customizable, but we're very uh, focused on the speed of these transactions and also the scalability. So although I only have four instances here, um, this does run with thousands of instances per single server. Now, we also have up here um, a plus, uh, a kind of an add icon here and a delete. So we are able to add comp files through the UI here, and we can also remove them. Um, now, you do have to remember to add the include, and this does assume you have some knowledge of Nginx already, um, but a lot of this functionality uh, is very useful. And you might say, well, I already have my own tools to do this. I, why would I ever use the UI? You don't have to. Um, we have a Swagger UI page here that lists all the APIs that the UI is using. So all the functionality I, I show uh, in, the, in the UI section is available uh, with API calls. So I could, for example, um, just do a get here and I can pull in some instances and then I can use the ID uh, here to, for example, get the uh, configuration files. And I'll just put that in here and I'll hit execute. And we can see uh, in base 64, uh, which could just be easily decoded, uh, you'll have those comp files and you'll see the name and it breaks them out. So we, we do support multiple comp files, uh, a lot of complexity, and we'll be eager to hear what you have um, out there if you have more complex use cases. So I've shown you uh, on the instance manager how we uh, look at new instances, how we can edit those. Uh, what I haven't shown you yet is the metrics. So let me go ahead and click on that metrics icon here. And you're gonna see, we do have just some top stats of memory load and connections handled. And you might also notice I have CPU load averages here, uh, memory usage and some response data. So I've got 200 and 400. Um, I don't have any three or 500 at the moment, but if I did, it would populate that. You might notice this is a bit limited. There's not additional selectors. There's no time series to select. And that's kind of on purpose. This is meant to show you uh, just some of the metrics that are available. Um, but right now, uh, what we offer is a Prometheus endpoint that you can query uh, using something like Grafana. So I'm gonna switch over to my Grafana instance here. And uh, although the graphs look pretty, I'm gonna go to data sources. And you might notice I'm just calling this as a Prometheus endpoint and slash metrics is where I point to. And that's really all I need to do. So if I go back here to the dashboard, which is using it, um, and this sample dashboard is included in, in, in the examples, um, I can hover over and get some more information. So in this case, it's a plus instance. You could see I do have my status zones and I can pull up all my plus metrics. Uh, in fact, let me go ahead and click edit here. And we're using Prometheus query language. So if we wanted to make something else, we could easily select metrics. We could go here and we can select from a variety of metrics that are available. Um, there'll be a lot of metrics for plus, but we also offer more than you can get out of the box with open source too. So that being said, we've shown uh, how the UI works, how the API works, and also uh, on the metric side, how, how we can uh, use Grafana to extend or use our own tools to do so. Um, I hope you've enjoyed learning about the Nginx Instance Manager, and please go ahead and download a trial um, or uh, contact your Nginx sales rep and uh, go ahead and get started uh, with this in your environment. Thank you.